Joe Biden is a racist. The Joe Biden administration engages in racist policy. That is not an opinion. In fact, that comes from a federal judge that said Biden Restaurant Fund discriminated against white male. You often hear about this, I guess, on the right, as exemplified by ground news, which you can see up top. Bias split across four sources. Now, let me explain what, what, what ground news is doing here. They're showing us this story and they're showing who is reported on this story. And as, as you can see, 75 percent, there's only four sources, are right wing. And the only centrist source to cover this was The Hill. Any leftist sources coming out against this? Absolutely not. Because Joe Biden is racist, but he's racist in a way that fits the ideology of the, f- the far left and the woke cult. We have an opinion piece from Jonathan Turley who goes into details about what happened with this case. But we're starting to see some pushback. You know, it's really, really funny. Hey, my friends, you know that I'm a fan of Tulsi Gabbard, right? Well, we saw this last week as well. Tulsi Gabbard demands Chicago mayor resign for blatant anti-white racism. Wow. Tulsi. Woo. Bringing the heat. But it's true. Joe Biden is racist against white people, as you can be. You can be racist against anybody on the basis of race. But the left is changing the definition on purpose to gain political power. Tulsi Gabbard had no problem calling it out. Can I hear a single Republican? Okay, there's some. This isn't about any stupid identitarian stuff. This is the opposite of it. These are the people who are classically liberal who are saying, hey, don't judge people on the basis of their race. Economic factors, way more important. Well, we'll read, this, we'll, we'll read a bit about what Tulsi said. But first, I want to talk about government policy from the White House. It straight up says they're, they're going to be racist. Jonathan Turley writes, Biden's COVID aid, is it preference or prejudice? Well, I think it's racist discrimination, like the judge said, but let's read. For, uh, for, for the Hill, Turley writes, President Biden has spoken out often, eloquently and passionately against the ugly poison of discrimination and racism in our government. So a ruling by a federal district court in Texas this week was particularly jarring. Judge Reed O'Connor found that the Biden administration engaged in systemic gender and race discrimination to implement COVID-19 relief for American restaurants. Cafe owner Philip Greer had claimed in a lawsuit against the Small Business Administration that while white, he needs the same rescue as minority restaurants under the newly enacted American Rescue Plan Act. Green's Ranch Cafe reportedly lost over $100,000 during the pandemic. Like many restaurateurs, Greer was delighted to hear about the Restaurant Restoration Fund approved by Congress. However, he soon learned that due to his race, he could not be considered until other applicants were allowed to seek funds. The White House and the Democratic-controlled Congress insisted that various groups should be first in line, including women, minorities, and socially and economically disadvantaged people. Talk about evil. I despise Democrats. I loathe Republicans, but I despise Democrats. And I think y'all get that by now. Let me explain something to you. This is absolutely a defeat. Oh, the judge may have ruled in favor of this man, but think about what they get away with. Think about Cuomo. The Cuomo brothers. Huh? First, Chris Cuomo props up his brother on TV. Any, uh, uh, any kind of correction in this regard? Any kind of punishment in this regard? No. Cuomo just goes, my bad, keeps his job. Governor Cuomo straight up kills a bunch of people and nothing happens. Yeah, I, I, I despise the Democrats. But here's the main point. Cuomo does these things, Andrew. He gets away with them. A court rules against him saying, you can't do this stuff. And he says, oh, no, I'll just draft another executive order because the court can't do crap about it. Gets away with it. Fifteen or so thousand people dead. Now for the Hill, we see this story. And what does this mean? This guy at the restaurant, he's just the one person suing. The Biden administration has successfully pulled this off. Done. It's done. The money's there. Gone. Sorry. You can sue but they've already done it. What good is the judge, is the system, if the money's already being dispersed on racist grounds? So good for him for winning. Maybe they'll not do it in the future. I doubt it. Supreme Court is pathetic. It's weakless. The federal courts can can, can barely do anything. 
They say the government confirmed that 2.7 billion already has been distributed through the fund and that there are almost 150,000 pending applications for, from owners with preferential treatment. As a result, owners like Greer fear not just delayed payments, but the exhaustion of the $28.6 billion allocated under the program. The SBA confirms it's already it already has requests for $65 billion in payments under the fund. Think about how psychotic you have to be to disp- to, to, to cause harm to someone on the basis of their race. This white guy, his restaurant went under. He needed help. But the racists the identitarians. This is straight up Nazism. Okay, maybe a little exaggerated, but think about it. It's very, very close to it at the very least. You see, what they're doing is they're creating policy based on race. The Democrats are doing it. They're getting away with it. They will do it more. They will do it again. What they want, their equity, is to strip the resources from one group and give it to another. And they're doing it with inflation And they're doing it with racist policies like this. It's going to make everything worse. It is. You know, the reason why I won't say it's communist is because the communists, while there were ethnic issues, for sure, the Holland Amor, right? What we're seeing is racial identitarianism, racial identitarianism combined with authoritarianism and a redistribution of wealth. So you can say it's it is communistic, but you throw in it's like communist Nazis. It's like the the worst of both. The, uh, this shit, this is criminal. They say the Biden administration agreed that such classifications, particularly based on race, must satisfy the highest constitutional burden of strict scrutiny. That means such classifications are unconstitutional unless they are narrowly tailored to serve a compelling governmental interest. However, the Justice Department cited studies that women and minorities historically have fewer lender resources and, before the pandemic, often were less likely to receive credit. There is ample support for that claim. The legal question is whether historical disparities are enough to justify a system of race and gender preferences when all restaurants were impacted by the pandemic. This is the government imposing rules due to a pandemic, fine, but still, that destroyed the economy destroyed the businesses of everyone, most people in the restaurant industry, for sure, who are now saying white people will not be allowed to get relief. This will unfairly disadvantage people based on race. It will reshape the economy, our community, our society on the basis of race. Sounds like Nazis to me. In 1989, the Supreme Court ruled that a minority set aside program in Virginia was unconstitutional under the Equal Protection Clause. The government cited historical barriers for minority enterprises, but the court balked. It noted that identified discrimination in the past would give government license to create a patchwork of racial preferences based on statistical generalizations about any any field of endeavor. When using racial classifications, the divided court stressed that simply legislative assurances of good intention cannot suffice. Judge O'Connor relied on such precedent to declare the enforcement of the criteria for COVID-19 relief to be raw racial and gender discrimination. His ruling can be appealed, but it highlights a concern over a variety of state and federal COVID-19 programs enforcing racial and gender criteria. To put it simply, everyone was impacted by this. There's an argument that if there was a racial policy like redlining, then you can have a government to rectify redlining. In this instance, the policy affected everyone of every race. So if you're saying, nah, none for you, you're just being racist. They go on to say, in Oregon, a state COVID-19 program for black businesses called the Oregon's Cares Fund was challenged by a Mexican-American cafe owner and others under the Equal Protection Clause, while legislative counsel and some legal experts raised concerns over the constitutionality of the law, a trial court rejected the challenge. Other such cases are continuing. Courts have allowed minority set-asides to remedy past inequities. Such programs often are created solely for that purpose and thus are treated as a remedial benefit for a targeted group, as opposed to an exclusionary denial for other groups. These cases can present difficult questions of what is needed to enforce a racial, racially discriminatory policy and when a legislative remedial measure becomes either a form of reparation or discrimination. 
So if you were to look at Japanese internment, and, and there were more people than just Japanese. There's a lot of Asian people. Reparations were specifically targeting the, these people for that reason. And that makes sense. To just outright deny a general relief program doesn't. The question is, when should preference be given over a common resource desperately needed by everyone? For example, the Biden administration in many states gave preferential treatment to minority communities in the allocation of early vaccines. I think that's wrong. States like Montana and Vermont gave people of color priority. Even Montana did that. That meant many other citizens had to wait due to their race for a vaccine in the middle of a lethal pandemic. Yet advocates cited greater vaccine hesitancy in minority areas and other historic barriers to medicine as justification. No, everyone was impacted by this. Everyone should be allowed to get the vaccine first come first serve. The court's concern in the Greer case is that the Biden administration's rationale would allow the use of racially discriminatory policies throughout the government. This is a far more nuanced constitutional issue than past challenges. Rather than impose a quota system or a direct exclusionary policy, Greer and others complain that the government can achieve the same result by prioritizing certain groups in the receipt of benefits. The alternative is to maintain a bright line against the use of racial criteria in government programs. In a 2007 case, Chief Justice John Roberts stated that position most succinctly by declaring that the way to stop discriminating on the basis of race is to stop discriminating on the basis of race. Hey, you'd think so. Apparently, logic doesn't work all too well for these people, or it does. And what they're really trying to do is strip resources and gain power. Turley goes on to say, even if such categories pass constitutional muster, there is the question of selecting selecting groups for favored treatment. In the case of Oregon's fund, Latino owners were excluded under the American Rescue Plan. Anyone can qualify for the preferential treatment if they claim to be part of a group that has been subjected to racial or ethnic prejudice or cultural bias within American society. Okay, then you can claim any group, right? Uh, I'm Irish, so I should get preferential treatment. Okay. Italians, Russians, whatever. Hey, the Russians, man, they got it bad all for the past four years, right? They say it is the legislative version of the special graduation held at the University of Portland for QTBIPOC, LGBTQIA, BIPOC. I, I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I, that's actually what it says. It says and or BIPOC. QTBIPOC. One of the inclusions were identified, were, were defined, the only major exclusion was straight white males. Sorry, straight white men. The question is whether an American rescue plan can tell white owners to wait for a rescue that might not come. Of course, as with vaccine priority programs, the preference given minorities was designed to be short lived and as a result, difficult to challenge. However, the underlying issue likely will remain as the Biden administration uses racial and gender criteria in a variety of government programs and resources. Indeed, the same logic was used in other programs like the special COVID-19 relief funds for black farmers, which I believe was also challenged. Now, here's what's funny. Black Lives Matter has made everything worse. Crime is skyrocketing in black neighborhoods. Crime is skyrocketing in general. I guess when you look to communism and authoritarianism, you can find one through line, one common factor. In order to make everyone equal, you need to chop off the tall grass. What does that mean? Well, let's say you have two people. One guy's five foot ten and one guy's five foot five and one guy's six foot five. Well, guy who's six foot five's got the advantage. Five foot ten guy's fairly average and the short guy, disadvantage. How do you make them equal? Well, you can't make the short person tall, giving him stilts, maybe. But then you'd have to give stilts to the other guy and and they might not may not, they might may not be able to use them or might not be able to afford them. In fact, it's too expensive to give technology to try and even level a playing field. There's an easier way to go about doing it. You go to the tall guy and you chop off a foot of leg. And then you go to the five foot ten guy and you cut off five inches of leg. There you go. You've even the playing field. In order to make everyone equal, you have to push everyone down because you can't lift everyone up equally. You can push everyone down equally and suppress them all and make them all hate life. And that seems to be what they do. He goes on to say, the question is how to draw the line when limited funds can result in the reduction or denial of government aid based solely on skin color. Uh, don't allow that at all. How about that? That fear of a zero sum game for public aid will deepen our divisions and undermine the worthy unifying theme struck by President Biden's campaign, which is fake. 
Racial discrimination is indeed a poison in our body politic, even when done with the best of motivations. The question is, how can the body politic tolerate? Well, how many people have talked about Tulsi Gabbard and this, you know, anti-white racism and all this stuff? Right wing outlets, for sure. What about the left? They ignore all of this. They're happy with all of this. Rich white progressives aren't worried about disparaging and creating disparities based on race. In fact, they revel in it. So you may have heard this story. It was Mayor Lori Lightfoot who banned white reporters from being from doing interviews. Tulsi Gabbard came out and said no. What's remarkable is that she's not even I don't even know if she, what she's doing right now. She's not in office. They say former Hawaii rep Tulsi Gabbard accused Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot of blatant anti-white racism for, uh, on Friday for only granting one-on-one -on -one interviews to black and brown reporters. Mayor Lightfoot's blatant anti-white racism is abhorrent, Gabbard, a Democrat, said. I call upon President Biden, Kamala Harris, and other leaders of, of our country, of all races, to join me in calling for Mayor Lightfoot's resignation. <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard's great. Our leaders must condemn all racism, including anti-white. Gabbard, who is Samoan, added, Wow. The Chicago mayor did not immediately respond to a request for comment from the Daily Caller News Foundation. Lightfoot announced earlier this week that she is prioritizing media requests from POC reporters. This is an imbalance that needs to change, Lightfoot tweeted. Chicago is a world class city. Our local media should reflect the multiple cultures that comprise it. We must be intentional about doing better. I believed that when I, I believed that when running for office, I stand on this belief now. It's time for the newsrooms to do better and build teams that reflect the makeup of our city. The White House did not immediately respond to a request for comment, they say. And uh, what is it they say? No one um, regarding the, the request for condemnation of blatant anti-white racism. When do you ever hear from any politician about anti-white racism, about racism against white people? Almost never. The Republicans are the party of speed bumps for the left. That's what they do. They're speed bumps for the left. But seriously, when the left decides to do something, when they start pushing racism, the right just says, no, wait, don't. And they get dragged to the left. One of the reasons is that conservatives aren't fighters, uh, for better or for worse. I mean, many of them are probably physical fighters. They might, you know, join up, serve more likely than liberals, perhaps. They might be willing to stand up for themselves in some regards, but they're not willing to get out and make demands. Maybe that's the antithesis of personal responsibility, and therein lies the problem. But if you don't make demands of your society and your country, then you will just lose. Look at gun control, for instance. There was this meme, this stupid meme post on Facebook about, no one's coming to take your guns. And I responded with, yes, they are. They want to make a bunch of guns illegal. And then I get these long winded replies where they're like, no one's taking your guns away. This is a myth. The NRA is lying to you. God, you're so dumb. And I'm like, they've literally banned my guns in bun a bunch of different states. I recently got, as you may have seen over at Cast Castle, the vlog, the SIG M400 from Crowder. You can't even bring that into some states. It's just a standard AR-15, fires 5.56. It's like an extremely common weapon. You can't bring it into many states. No joke. It's already getting banned. They're not going to outright be like, we hereby ban guns. Boom. They go like, oh, that particular gun. Oh, that particular modification. They're doing it one step at a time. I'm not here to talk about the gun stuff. The point is, Republicans don't push back. They don't. Trump did. Marjorie Taylor Greene does. A few people do. But for the most part, Republicans don't. McConnell goes, this is wrong. I say, you know, slow down there, Democrats. And then the Democrats just do it anyway. And then when the Republicans get in powder, they're like, well, 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 you know, we're not going to. There you go. When the Republicans are sitting in, they don't do anything. The left then screams Republicans are fascists and Republicans are so pathetic. They don't do anything. And I feel bad for the Republican voters who just keep voting these people in. I get it, though. People are like, what? So then just give the Democrats power. No, primary these people primary the Republicans. I got a problem with Republicans. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go look for the Republican primary and I'm going to find the person who believes in individual liberty and will push back and say, one of the first things I'm going to do when I get in office is condemn anti-white racism and stop the ban on guns and repeal gun laws. How many Republicans right now are offering up bills to repeal federal gun laws? How many? 
None that I've heard of. Maybe they're doing it. I don't know. They should be doing it more. In fact, they should be Republicans demanding universal gun ownership. That's right. Everybody should be required to own a gun. I'm not seriously saying that people should all have guns. If you want one, you should. But you see what the Democrats do? They want to ban private health insurance. Bernie Sanders says outright abolish it. No country does that. And he's taken seriously by a large amount of people. The Democrats fall in line with these lunatic leftists, the tankies. And there you go. Tulsi Gabbard, she got more spine as a Democrat than the Republicans do. I like Tulsi. But if Republicans don't stand up and speak out against this, it's, it's over. Biden has already done it. Biden has already gotten away with giving away taxpayer money on the basis of race. Oh, you want to complain about reparations? He just did it. Too bad. Now, I think Tulsi was in favor of reparations, too. So it's, it's all over the place. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.